Dr. Kavan Kaiser is a pediatrician with 25 years of clinical experience and her works for humanity on various fronts. She's a dynamic orator and a preacher who has been conducting training sessions for mothers, teachers, and community workers for the past 18 years. She has also participated in many morning shows for parenting segments on TV and did programs with children as well in the past 10 years. Her source of Quranic education is Al Huda International Welfare Foundation, Pakistan, where she is working as director of Hamari Bachche, Weekend Islamic Program for Children. She's also an instructor of the Visionary Family Series at Ilm Institute. Her main field is about training parents how to groom children as better humans and Muslims. For this, she has authored several books which are taught in many schools and has conducted many workshops on the upbringing of children. However, her workshops are not just confined to children, but for directionless Muslim youth across the globe as well. Uh, now over to you, Dr. Kabul. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihil kareem amma baad fa'auzu billahi min ash-shaytwani rajeem bismillahi r-rahmani r-rahim rabbi sharah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul uqdatam min lisani yafqahu kawli First of all, I would like to thank uh, Ilm Institute for giving me this opportunity, amazing opportunity to conduct this webinar. Today the topic is very, very important. I have called it parenting in 21st century and this is the time of fitnas. And we do recall uh, in one of the narrations in which the Prophet وسلم, said, um, he was on the rooftop and he said, do you see what I see? And the companion said, what do you see? And he said, I see fitnas falling down like raindrops into the houses. And whenever I go over this narration, I always actually am thinking that um, a raindrop, like even right now in Islamabad, it's raining. Rain is something which we take it on a lighter note and as such we enjoy. But this is something like, you know, it comes into our houses in a very subtle manner. But ultimately, we do take a lot of uh, impacts, a lot of challenges. And obviously, that becomes very, very difficult for us to handle. So when we say parenting... We are in, in this very different era because if you look at children today, we see that um, they have so many opportunities of growing and parents, they have to pay a lot of attention in the right way because when we do too much for the kids, that can also take them toward the wrong direction. And a lot of time, children, when they don't get the focus and they land into puberty, they have anxiety, they have depression. And so children who are facing a lot of challenges, one of them, it is the most challenging task for all the parents. There is little room for an innocence in these times. There is war, there is violence, there is sexuality. So much is happening over here. And while there is little that parents can do to eliminate all these external factors, what we can do is at least make our home safer place for children. Um, another important thing is we expected to raise our kids in a very perfect manner, but somehow we do find out that it doesn't happen that way. So with changing times, the challenges are also changing. And we find out in the past, all the parenting philosophies they have parents overreacting or underreacting or they were in denial or they were making excuses for their kids' behavior. Um, at the very same time, they were providing choices versus direction. They were causing confusions in some places. They either understood the boundaries or failed to understand the boundaries for their children. So over the past decade, we see that parents, they have been begging and negotiating with their children in an attempt to put them on the right track. But ultimately, in these challenging times, what we find is there is a technology challenge. Um, the children, they have very sharp reflexes. They are way ahead of us in many areas when we're trying to communicate something to them. There are a lot of 
world matters that are discussed with them and they sometimes come up with very different kind of a world view they are very argumentative the online world is a learning platform for them not only just learning earning as well you find very small kids having their own independent youtube channels and they're trying to make money over there and addictions are on the rise vulgarities on the rise and with a junk kind of lifestyle the obesity is also on the rise so the parenting challenge today we see that kids they face challenges and dangers that most of us never dreamed about when we were growing up and there are online predators um there are school shootings there is cyber bullying and there is so much confusion as i mentioned there is anxiety there is uh, depression there uh, there are performance issues and uh, we have children with suicidal behaviors and they're spending so much time in front of the screens than we have, we could ever imagine and all the information that they're absorbing from these sources so it is putting a lot of pressure on them into their day to day life in addition what we find out that uh, families are getting dysfunctional there is divorce there is remarriage um there is lack of parental involvement so it is all impacting children and um their uh, academics their relationships at home um how they're growing up and the social influences include something which leads them from towards pornography even the substance abuse and bullying um so all these factors what we see is that there are no healthy coping mechanisms um uh, and there is lack of this uh, positive social interaction so the children they are also in lot of conflict and living with these challenges and yes it becomes even a bigger challenge for the parents how to address it and ultimately when they grow up and i call the teenagers grown up child because i've seen many parents who are so frustrated with the teenagers especially when they had been working uh from the very childhood and they have a dream and they they feel like once our kids become adults they are in their teens they will be more responsible in their behaviors but ultimately what we find is it's not the reality uh, these are acting like grown up kids so uh, these these kids basically they have this emotional backpack and there's so many concerns so many questions their influences into their daily life so the children they pose questions regarding their competency their worth their identity their performance their ability to succeed their security their safety and they're trying to look for the answers everywhere they're trying to cope with those those areas they're trying to feel good about themselves and yet at the very same time with all these confusions the parents they are sometimes not around either physically or um, mentally and again the kids when they go to their school their institutions with their peers they're trying to struggle with the coping mechanism and uh, they're trying to make good sense of what the parents have taught and what the society is teaching them so it's a it's a big challenge um and then we see that as they growing up there is a battle going on in their own head between their emotional and intellectual brain uh there is a rational part of the brain which is the prefrontal cortex and then there is limbic system which is like this kid always trying to come up and throw tantrums and we also find out that this prefrontal cortex which has all the capacities all the skills all the coping mechanisms that develop but it is completely developed between the age of 21 to 25 years so that means that uh even when they're teenagers they need lot of help uh, with all the learning and developing this resilience and i would call it emotional resilience because uh, what they do is they're making up excuses for their behaviors they want to develop strong sense of self they want to be motivated for the new opportunities and yet at the very same time their decision making is not concrete their reasoning is more emotional um, not consequence based and it is so much hard for them to have appropriate analysis of different situation that is why many a times what the parents do is they are into sort of a hard talk with their kids the kids they come up to them and say okay explain to me why i can, can't do a certain thing and the parent is totally numb because they don't know how to bring across a certain point to them 
what they're doing is they're trying to look for some escape this brings up a lot of conflicts with the parents and again the children they take so much impact from their friends and it is ultimately on the rise so with this what we find out is that the parental blunders are there when the support is required the most so we expecting perfect behavior at all ages a lot of time when parents they talk to me and they give me a list of things that they expect their kids to do and i just look at them and i ask them do you think that even you are able to do everything that you're supposed to be doing look at all the tasks and chores that you're supposed to be uh, managing on your own and they say well i know i have so many areas to work on but my kid again you know comes up with this like perfect package that they're expecting so best manners all the time we want them to be having a very professional use of the language we want them to be submitting to all our commands and many times we act like a helicopter parent like we're always coming to their rescue whenever they are caught up in some situation and we never let them troubleshoot or um, never let them like you know learn something come up with a solution yes they will make mistakes but ultimately they will grow out of that we leave them no room for any form of mistake so having said that um what we need to do in these times when there's so many fitna we need to see the problems in a new dimension and because parental responsibility is to guide and take it as a process because i know when uh, we will come up to the questions um many of you would be wanting to know about the screen time or about the peer pressure or about hijab or about modesty about this clash of civilizations that we come across but if you ask me very honestly i feel that these are the times when we need to come to very basics and if we have strong foundation principles with us trust me whatever things are around you will be able to handle them well okay i have this one angry mother who is asking me if there is something for her in it you know what you need to do is right now put away your anger hold a cup of healthy drink in your hand it could be just water or hot chocolate or just milk and go through this session with me and write down notes for yourself what is it that you can do problems that have to be seen from a new dimension what is it what can we do which can help us handle lot of challenges that we come across because all over the world the challenges are changing challenges are multiplying and we as parents are getting sort of paranoid we are living with lot of phobias lot of fears lot of anxiety and depression ourselves we are becoming shaky in our parental practices so the first and foremost point is that you need to be very deep rooted in your parenting practice and yes have firm faith on allah subhanahu wa taala that when you are trying uh, to put in your best inshallah the results are again going to be with allah subhanahu wa taala so the painful truth is we are basically more focused on the behavior management we are not able to see the beauty of the child who is in front of us and we are always intending or whenever we are interacting with our kids what we are trying to do is correct whatever behavior is there but what we need to focus on is more than that and what would that be we need to be alert on some of the risky behaviors that our kids could be involved in so for that you have to be little relaxed for that you have to uh, look at your kid as a wholesome person and then move on from there so what are the different risky behaviors which should put you on alert that yes this is something that i need to be working on and i call it parental radar to be on alert because something that comes in your radar and it buzzes for you that's when you need to become extra cautious like there is some sort of a law breaking attitude that you observe in your kid it could be at any age um the your kid is going into the violence zone you find some addictive patterns in your child uh you see your kid making unwise decisions again it could be for any age and then you see that your kid is not having any coping mechanism it lacks all those mechanisms that's the time when you need to ask yourself couple of questions like you need to ask yourself what academic and therbia and emotional standards have i set for my child and what do i need to know about my kid 
you also need to ask yourself how will i respond if or when the child struggles with any of these parameters what am i going to do when i notice some unwise decision or i see some law breaking attitude or i see some uh, addictive pattern in my child um, then what are the most important and complex ideas my child needs to understand you can set a certain framework like end of this year or um, like in 2 years or 5 years do i focus on the strength of my child or the weaknesses um what about the creativity and innovative thinking is my child using it on daily basis then what about the critical thinking am i helping my child develop that thinking and again then assessments what kind of assessments have i designed to promote the learning it could be the academic learning it could be tarbiya plan that i have from quran and sunna it could be the relationships that my kid has then um what can i do to support some form of literacy or education um, and learning and practical learning at home then what kind of questions do you suggest that i ask my child on daily basis uh, what exactly is learning personalized for each child how do you measure this progress of my kid then what are the most common strategies i use um with my child understanding his temperament then all the dynamics which are there at home so there are like many things that you have to be focusing on um then uh, what are the best sources that we should consider when we talk about a child in the family and um am i able to find some sources via technology for some self directed learning as a parent what are the barriers that i have and how the education is changing how the learning style is changing how the kids are changing what are they absorbing from the environment and how much am i helping them and what do i see the role of the whole family in this learning process like my spouse like the rest of the siblings like um, my in-laws my own family members extended family members Uh, everyone and what should i be asking myself when so with all these risky behavior it's not like you go in your panic mode your push button is there and then there is a burnout and then you are screaming and you're shouting and you are warning and you're threatening your kid and you're not actually coming out with any solution and end of the day the risky behavior of your child is getting more and more enhanced so that is why whenever you have a certain behavior you sit down you pause and you actually ponder over all those ideas imagine our kids knowing that we are attending this webinar for them uh, you know we are attending that this webinar for our own self i remember a couple of years back i was sitting in my room and i was reading a book and my 7 year old daughter she came up to me and she saw this the title of the book was discipline your kids and she said you know mom i think parents are really rude and i said what do you say that she said look they are not disciplined themselves and they are trying to teach us discipline so i told my daughter i said listen um i i wish you can open this book and read it because throughout the book it's they're not talking about the discipline of the, the kids they're talking about if the parents are disciplined if they are focused that's when they'll be able to discipline their kids so let's move on from there and um we have to understand our struggles as parents either we are too rushed or uh, things are too hectic for us we are too stressed out we we are either using wrong parenting methods or we are not aware of what we should be using like in surah taghabun verse number 15 allah subhanahu wa taala narrated this inna ma amwalukum wa auladukum fitna your riches and your children may be but a trial wallahu indahu ajrun azim but in the presence of allah is the highest reward so yes they are going to be tests for us none of us can say that there is not a single test that i have faced with my again you know the resources as well as my children and then end of the day allah subhanahu wa taala is going to look at all our struggles and end of the day allah subhanahu wa taala is going to reward us inshallah for that with this we need to set certain targets for ourselves like i would say one of the target as a parent is unwavering and unconditional love for the kids and um you know we need to detach the behavior of the child and the discipline techniques that we use from the love of that we have for our kids because many times what we're doing is if my kid is behaving as i want them to behave so i love you if you're behaving in a wrong way 
or you're going totally against what I have taught you. So I can't stand you as my, I disown you as my kid. So this is not the way that we should be uh, doing. Uh, so children must be loved and they must be valued and they must not be wounded beyond repair. Because many times I have met even adults who come to me and they say that I had such a ripped off childhood and I was like, you know, always stabbed by the remarks from my parents. And even when I'm grown up, I'm not able to come out of it. And I don't find myself to have emotional stability. But there is a conventional trap. There is a societal expectation of a good parent. And this just drains away the joy of parenting. For example, um, as a pediatrician, I can tell you uh, when the baby is born and within a few days, I get a panic driven, drained mother with the newborn baby in her lap. She's not enjoying the baby because she is assessed on her parenting scale as to how she is managing the baby. If she's able to feed the baby, if she's able to uh, cope with the baby, if she's able to understand uh, the morning of the baby. And she is like feeling so exhausted at the end of the day. And she is trying to assess her parenting as to the comments and remarks and uh, you know all the suggestions and recommendations she's getting from people. So all, what I have to do is actually sort of hug her and ease her out and tell her you're doing a marvelous job or tell her you're a brave mom or you know guide her towards like uh, just love your baby just enjoy your baby and stop like uh, getting um, all these impacts from people similarly if you have especially like a two-year-old kid and you are going to a marketplace or in public place you're in a park and your kids throws the tantrum um, I can assure you a lot of moms with kids same age must be thinking in their heart, I'm so glad this is not my kid because they understand their kids are also going to behave the similar way. But again, the ground reality is that if your kid is doing this, then you're assessing your parenting standing over there as a criminal in the court. You're like thinking, what would people be saying about me? So you're not enjoying your kid. You're not enjoying what he's demanding or how you would manage your kid irrespective of how people see you and as they grow up then there are more challenges like they're super informed they're super connected to the world and again how they are managing all those areas 